Coming up in this video, I'm going to show you how I paint a Dungeons & Dragons male human fighter from WizKids and their Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line. Welcome back to Mini Junkie, guys. My name is Jarrett. So, like I said, we're going to be painting up a D another D&D character. This is, I actually thought he was a barbarian for the longest time, but he's not. Um, he's a male human fighter. Really cool model, just like the rest of them. A couple spots where I lost a bit of detail in the cleanup. So, for example, he's holding one arm up, and you'll see there's a loss of some of the chainmail detail here. But in, in general, I think he painted up pretty well. With these miniatures, they're pre-primed, so I'm not, I'm not priming them again, so to speak. I'm not doing a zenithal or zenithal prime and I'm not doing black or anything like that. The primer actually works really good on these guys that the primer it comes with. Uh, it's Vallejo brand so I'm cool with that. I do take a bit of a speed painting approach with this guy again so I'm using a lot of things like inks and glazing and washes and stuff like that trying to get a, a good looking result for playing Dungeons and Dragons or, or you know playing other games with this guy but not spending a ton of time on him and not again not trying to win any awards here but I think if you follow along or, or watch certain segments, you'll find some new tips on how to get a quick and easy result, especially with these miniatures. Let's get to the painting table. All right, guys, here's a few photos of the finished miniature that we are going to be working on in this video. So I've got them mounted on a 25 millimeter base with some Vallejo texture paste for the base material, and I'm using the primer he came with. First up is the hair. We're gonna use Vallejo Game Ink Brown and just brush it right over the hair, just being careful not to go outside the hairline and just give it one even coat. For various leather areas on the model, I'm using uh, Vallejo Game Ink Sepia and again, just applying it right out of the bottle, carefully just staying, staying in the line, so to speak, like a coloring book and just applying it right over the light primer. This is pretty easy to apply, but you will want to watch out for any pooling and just soak that up with your brush. Now for the hair, I'm going to go back with the Vallejo Brown ink and just give it a second coat now that the first one is dry. Now some Seraphim Sepia right out of the bottle and I use that to do the feathered tips of the arrows and the straps on his boots just to give it a lighter sort of tan color. Something you can do with the inks is mix them together for different tones. So I add a drop of black to the original sepia ink and I did some dark leather on his belt. Similarly, adding a touch of yellow ink to the brown ink, I use that to tint the uh, like bedroll on his back. For all the metals, uh, including his breastplate and the blades and also his knee armor plates. I'm not actually sure if those are supposed to be metal, but I used uh, bolt gun metal. You could use um, lead belcher or any kind of gun metal color. For contrast, I just went with black, black pants. There's not a whole lot of material showing. I just used black ink and did, I think, two coats. The tabard, I wanted it to be a reddish brown, which is exactly what this is from Vallejo. It's quite thin out of the bottle, so I ended up doing two coats. You could use any sort of reddish brown you want. Boring step number one, Mornfang Brown. I used that to do a base coat on the quiver. I normally won't wash metals with the basic shades from GW as it will really dull them down and remove the metallic shine. In this case, I want to do that in anticipation of future highlights, so just go ahead and slather it all over the metal. At this point, I still thought he was a barbarian, so I used Army Painter Barbarian Flesh. Uh, I was going to use that anyway, but it's a little thin out of the bottle, and that's after shaking and stirring it a lot, so I think it took a couple thin coats. You want to do his face and his hands and also the very small amount of his arms that are showing. For the base I just covered the whole thing with Mechanicus Standard Grey from GW. Right about now I'll tell you that I was experimenting with camera position and some of these angles aren't the greatest. This is boring step number three-ish roughly. This is a Doom Bull Brown. I'm just using this as a base coat on the bow on his back. Now going back to that red brown with the tabard I use a bit of glaze medium and a little bit of Ushapti bone mixed in to do a first highlight and then I did subsequent highlights by adding a bit more bone into that mix. I also use that highlight mix to paint the straps that are holding on his bedroll. For the hilts of his two weapons I used scale 75 viking gold which seems to be my go-to lately. Next up I shaded the bow and the quiver at the same time with Agrax Earthshade. And then I gave the flesh an all-over shade with Reichlin Flesh Shade. I don't tend to dilute my shades with water, so I just do these things out of the pot. 
I won't show this whole step, but it's a dry brush of first Dawnstone on all over the base and then a lighter dry brush more on the edges and on the texture with Administratum Grey. Now for the flesh, very similar to how I do a lot of highlights, I add Ushapti bone or any kind of bone color to the original base. So in this case, the Barbarian flesh, a little bit of glaze medium, and I do careful highlights on all the raised surfaces, things like cheekbones, uh, bridge of the nose, etc., uh, tops of biceps and things like that. And I do that highlight a couple times, adding bone each time to brighten it. So what you're seeing here is actually two or three highlight steps that all uh, kind of blended together in the edit. For the final sharpest highlights on his face to brighten it up, I add a drop of white to that last mix I was highlighting with just to create a, again, a, a fairly bright highlight for the nose and the chin and the cheekbones and brow. Holding my breath and bracing my fingers, I do a Menoth white highlight for the eyeballs. And that's followed by Vallejo game color black dotted in very carefully. Bow and quiver were highlighted by adding um, Ushapti bone to the two browns I used. For the little bit of string on his hair and on the bow on the back, I used Karak stone. I kind of goofed up the bow string, so then what I ended up doing after is going in with some brown ink right over top of that. To create some shading on the base, I just blotched on some Nuln oil right out of the bottle. You can see it here. Just a quick interjection here. So I did, at this step, matte varnish the whole uh, fighter miniature and the reason is a couple things one is i wanted to take off all the shine from the inks and essentially protect the miniature for gaming but i also did it at this point knowing that the matte varnish was going to dull down the metallics and that I, my final step was going to be to actually highlight the metallics in two steps so that you'd have a nice matte finish for all the things like the hair and the skin and, and the leather and stuff but the, ultimately the armor and the weapons will still have that nice metallic shine. And speaking of metallics, I start with a chain mail, which is kind of like a rune fang steel, and highlight the sort of the edges of the weapons, um, and then and the raised sort of upper surfaces. And then I actually tried to pull out that chain mail detail a little bit, just bit by bit with my brush, and of course applied uh, the highlights to the chest plate and, and uh, areas of metal around the miniature. Then I did a final, much smaller highlight using straight silver, like a Stormhose silver. This is mithril silver, just for the very edges of the weapons and some very sort of specific points on the armor just to bring out some brightness. And once that was done, the miniature was finished. In the end, for the amount of time and, and effort it took to paint this guy, I'm actually really happy with how he turned out. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider liking and sharing it and maybe even subscribe if you're feeling crazy. If you're a long-term viewer of my videos and part of my audience, maybe consider uh, subscribing to me on Patreon and pledging even a dollar a month helps me to continue buying miniatures and paints to keep making these videos.